O God, you are my God. Eagerly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you, as in a barren and dry land where there is no water. Therefore I have gazed upon you in your holy place, that I might behold your power and your glory. For your loving kindness is better than life itself. My lips shall give you praise. So will I bless you as long as I live, and lift up my hands in your name. My soul is content as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the night watches, for you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. My soul clings to you. Your right hand holds me fast. Today we remember Lancelot Andrews, Bishop of Winchester. Lancelot Andrews was the favorite preacher of King James I. He was the author of a great number of eloquent sermons, particularly on the Nativity and the Resurrection. They are witty, grounded in the scriptures, and characterized by the kind of massive learning that the king loved. This makes them difficult reading for modern people, but they repay, repay careful study. T.S. Eliot used the opening of one of, the, one of Andrew's Epiphany sermons as the inspiration for his poem, The Journey of the Magi. A cold coming we had of it, just the worst time of the year for a journey, and such a long journey, the way deep and the weather sharp, the very dead of winter. Andrews was also a distinguished biblical scholar, proficient in Hebrew and Greek, and was one of the translators of the authorized King James Version of the Bible. He was Dean of Westminster and headmaster of the school there before he became a bishop, and was influential in the education of a number of noted churchmen of his time, in particular, the poet George Herbert. Andrews was a very devout man, and one of his most admired works is his private devotions, an anthology from the scriptures and the ancient liturgies compiled for his own use. It illustrates his piety and throws light on the sources of his theology. He vigorously defended the Catholicity of the Church of England against Roman Catholic critics. He was respected by many as the very model of a bishop at a time when bishops were held in low esteem. As his student, John Hackett, later Bishop of Lichfield, wrote about him, Indeed, he was the most apostolical and primitive-like divine, in my opinion, that wore a rochette in his age of a most venerable gravity, and yet most sweet in all commerce, the most devout that I ever saw when he appeared before God, of such a growth in all kind of learning that very able clerks were of a low stature to him. Let us pray. Almighty God, you gave your servant Lancelot Andrews the gift of your Holy Spirit and made him a man of prayer and a faithful pastor of your people. Perfect in us what is lacking in your gifts of faith to increase it, of hope to establish it, of love to kindle it, that we may live in the life of your grace and glory through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the same Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.